Yeah, hello, hey, Bernard. Hey, Kai. Back in the series. Uh, what Back are in. we doing next? We have yeah. two optional steps, but I really like them. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, what do they we do are... with FS Logic? They are very likely to do to be done. Uh, to be honest, right? So, um, FS Logic, or step number four, is optional, but probably very likely to do. Um, FS Logic is a solution for the uh, for the people that want to have profiles or a, a a profile management solution for their virtual desktops. So think of it, um, you know, we do have you have a multiple a lot of users that are accessing um, shared desktops, right? Um, the difficulty is, you know, these users work with it. They you know create documents in the documents folder. They download uh, stuff. They you know, paste pictures maybe on their desktops. Uh, they put something on their desktop itself. And this, this is valid data, right? Um, but what you don't want to have is when, uh, when this user comes back the next day and maybe is using or connected to a different desktop because of pooling, right, and load balancing, um, they want to have their data. So you need to, you know, uh, copy that data to a central location and have a mechanism that makes it possible that the uh, that this data is moving or uh, is, is is mapped to the logon or, or is following along the logon session with that user and FS logics is doing that so but we need to provide a central file share for FS logics to work and that's what we did in a different series uh, so we provided a highly available uh, scale out file server which is providing a SMB file share uh, highly available um, and maybe you show that and make a little bit of appetite for the uh, for the other series um, because yeah. we didn't we, we we don't want to do it in here but we uh, we have we don't want to say uh, we don't uh, we want to share that content with you but it's yeah, um, uh, yeah we series. need we need a we need a central storage for our profiles and in mm -hmm. FS Logic in this scenario we will use user profile disks, there are other possibilities. Mm -hmm. So, and for user profile disks, these are VHDX files, and there is nothing better than a, a scale-out file server, and you can do a scale-out file server on Storage Basis Direct, and Storage Basis Direct is the same technology we use in Azure Stack HCI. Mm -hmm. So we provided a two-node mm -hmm. um, scale-out file server, Storage Basis Direct, with local disks, and mm -hmm. um, in these two nodes, there is a cluster running. Just to give you a peek, here is this two node cluster for the cluster manager. And we have one role here, and this is a scale out file server. And the purpose of this scale out file server is to provide high available shares. So um, if you want to have more information, there's a two part mini series. Uh, uh, Bernard, we will have a link in the video description to that. Look at it, but we highly recommend to have a high available storage for your profiles. Mm -hmm. So how does it look if we go here, uh, our scale out file server has the name Zoff scale out file server. Uh, you can name it however you want. And you see here, I provided two shares. Mm -hmm. So um, now um, I always, I'm joking, I'm not a security guy, but at least we need some security. Yeah. And in these shares, we will find the profiles of multiple users or the user right. profile disk. So we need some security here that I can't get to your profile because sometimes there is very important information installed in the profile. If you yeah. save an Excel file or whatever, it's there. So we have to protect that. And how do we so do the, that? Yeah. So the uh, you know the uh, the VHDX file with the profiles which are sitting on that sh on that share are mapped under the user's account, right? The mm -hmm. the one that is logging on to. So we need to make sure that these permissions are set correct and what you mentioned with no traversal should be allowed. So I should be allowed to do stuff with my profile but not with the other one, right? Not with mine. Um, yes. Um, so uh, I think, you know, I came across uh, or, you know, in order to make that stuff repeatable, I provided some PowerShell script for doing this uh, because, you know, it's a little bit tricky, uh, especially with the inheritance kind of flags. Um, and the difficulty is also the fact that you don't want to pre-create and preset all the permissions for all of the possible users, whichever might connect to the desktops, right? 
Um, so if a user is connecting for the first time, he should have the rights to create the profile himself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then work with his profile, but not, um, and that's possible to do with the, uh, with the permissions, but it's a little bit more, you know, um, more intelligence that needs to go in into the setting uh, and playing a little bit with inheritance. So um, if I, you know, I would love if you could, you know, select some of the sections that make sense to you, maybe the paragraph wise uh, and execute it. And while you're doing this, I will talk a little bit over what it's doing. So first thing is easy, um, you know, we are filling the domain name uh, for that because we are using a users group and then we are, you know, getting the current account list uh, or the handle for the, uh, for the current, uh, uh, for the current share, right? Uh, so then in the next step, um, we are removing all of the permissions um, and um, set it in the next line. So the next two lines is, uh, you know, remove all what's in there and and and, and set it, um, and then um, we'll replace it with our wanted permissions, which is yeah. basic permissions for domain controllers, uh, not for domain controllers, for domain admins, for the uh, for the system, and also for the creator owners, right? But the thing the thing is with the I'm playing a little bit with the object inheritance, um, so you see some some parameters here. Um, you know, I would need to dig into what I really did uh, years ago. And uh, so yeah. uh, bear, bear with me that this uh, plays a little bit with the object inheritance. Yeah, and okay. I used uh, the same commands to play with the access rights. And it's not the easiest power shelling that you have to do because you set everything on the object and then you say, push the object yeah. to the right. Yeah. So yeah. we will do this together. So first mm -hmm. you, we remove yeah. all the rights, whatever is there, and we set mm -hmm the rights we want. So this is the first part. Okay. I will copy it over Yeah. and so. enter. So now uh, we should have a, a clean slate with the permissions yeah. we want to have. Okay. This, there is a second part here, right? What do we yes. do here? So the next part is for, you know, the, the interesting FS logics part, right? So which is we have a group with all the AVD users, which is called AVD users. Okay, um, so instead of you know giving the accounts or the users individual access, we are putting them into a group. Um, and then we do the and, same, right? We and add then this. we do the same, but these permissions are really sort of restricted, right? So you could see that you do have um, some permissions, especially read, read permissions, right? Append data, execute file. Um, yeah, I would say let's run it and maybe then afterwards we have a look at um, how these permissions look like on if you open up uh, File Explorer and go into the NTFS settings, right? So we have set it for File mm. Explorer. I have to go to a system with a GUI. Mm. So we set it here. Mm -hmm. And if I go to properties, let's see if we can see the security. And here we uh, have it, okay? If you would put the, or uh, hit the edit button, please. Uh, you no, want the advanced, right? Yeah, I want the other ones. This one. one, yeah. Right, and select the, um, you know, the creator owner has subfolders and files only, right? So that's mm -hmm. the possibility to create new files and new folders for the individual users. And then the AVD users have, um, you know, special permissions on this folder only, not for the subfolders, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you go in there, and have a look at, um, yes, yeah, see, these are special permissions and here you see uh, the minimal set, right? So it's relatively stripped down, right? So you can create folders in the pen data there, but you know, not not on uh, the subfolders, right? So yeah, that's how we want it. Um, and we'll do the test a afterwards, right? So I will play user two, evil user and trying to, you know, get into your profile um, and see, if that works, if it's done, we did a bad job. If it's not working, then we can get it, okay? I think it, it will work. Yeah. But for that, we, of course, have to have our profiles already. That's in a later video. So we, uh, right. so so this is part we finish one. here? Or? Yeah, this is part one of, you know, the setting. We've done the uh, NTFS permissions. And the next video is about, you know, applying um, the settings using a group policy. See you there.